Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be covering some quantitative reasoning questions, especially some of the more trickier ones that you guys have sent in. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it then. So this question asks, how many marshals are required at the Edinburgh Triath Ironman Triathlon event? So an Ironman Triathlon event is being held in Edinburgh, involves 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile cycle and 26.22 mile run. Marshals are hired to look over the event. They're placed every 0.2 miles of the swim course, 8 miles of the bike course, every mile of the run course. If there is a marshal at the end of the swim or bike, then there's no marshal at the end of the, st of the start of the bike or run, because I guess it goes swim, bike, and then run. So if there's someone at the end here, they can kind of cover both. You don't need another person here. That's not necessarily. Okay, I think that's what they're trying to allude to. There's a marshal at the beginning, but not the end of the race. Okay, cool. Marshals are paid at a rate of £8.60 per hour. And it says the swimming course takes place over three laps of a 0.8 mile course in the form of a circular loop. So if we do it bit by bit, so that means there is a marshal at zero, um, then there is a marshal at 0 0.2, and so this is just the swimming section, then there's a marshal at 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and you don't need a marshal at 0 0.8 because 0 0.8 is going back to where the zero is, if that makes sense, and then that will repeat. So for the swimming section, you only need four marshals. Okay? Then on to the next bit, so the cycle. So for the bike, it says every eight miles of the course, there is um, a marshal, um, but we know that, remember, the swimming thing looks like this. So it's both 0 and 0 0.8 and 1.6 and 2.4, if you think about it. So every time you go around, you complete. And I'm guessing then you go off on the bike. But at this point here, this is technically the start of the bike section and the end of the swimming. And there will already be a marshal there, so we don't need to start off. So the first bike marshal, I guess, um, is not, you know, we don't have to put another one at 0 because there already will be that one there from the swimming. So the first bike marshal will be at um, the 8th mile mark, and then so on and so on and so on. So the fast way to just calculate that is 112 divided by 8, which is 14. So we know for the bike, therefore, there must be 14 marshals with the last marshal at 112 miles. Okay? And then, finally, um, once again, same situation with the run. So if you have a marshal right at the end at the 112th mile, um, you don't need someone at the 0th mile of the run, because that's what it says here, no other marshal is required. So therefore, with the run, it's just uh, a marshal every mile. So that's just one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 26. So therefore, we're going to have 26 marshals here. So in total, you need 26 plus 14 plus 4, which is going to be 44 marshals. Okay, so it does seem quite complex, but I don't necessarily think it's that bad as long as you understand this key piece of information. Okay, it's quite quite crucial and about understanding um, the question and, and to see questions like this is really, really important. But once again, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I don't really think you'll get a question like this in the official UK. Okay, so on to the next question then. Okay, so on to the next question. So um, this is a set that was sent in. The distance between two towns is 0.96 centimetres on a regional map with major features only that was made by the cartographer. The cartographer disguised to remake the map on a different scale. The new version will be a local map with greater detail for land management. What is the distance between the two towns on the new version of this map? So this seems complicated, but it's dead easy. Okay, so let's take the key ideas. 0.96, regional map, major features only. The cartographer decides to remake the map on a different scale. So the new version is local map with greater detail for land management. So... We are looking for regional map with major features only, and that's the scale used, 1 to, 1 to 125,000. So 0.96 cm to x is 1 to 125,000, okay? So if we times this number by 125,000, we'll find exactly how um, many um, centimetres that this, um, the distance between the two towns is in real life. Okay, so you times it by 125,000 and you get x is 120,000 centimetres, okay, which is 1.2 kilometres, I guess. Okay, um, but that doesn't matter anyways. And now it says it's remaking it on the local map. So it's a local map, so it's one of these two, but greater detail for government um, planning and land management. Okay, yeah, so this one. So we need 1 to 30,000. So if we're going 1 to 30,000, and we know, once again, we're going y to 120,000, because that's what we're trying to find out, equals 1 to 30,000. You just have to divide this by the other. Uh, and if you do that, you get 4. So that means you must have to multiply this by 4 to get it up, to scale it up, basically. So y simply equals 4 centimeters. Okay, so genuinely not that bad a question. It's just about figuring out what is the actual size and then creating an appropriate scale for that as such. 
Okay, cool. So let's keep going. Okay, on to the next question. The cartographer makes a spherical globe representing the Earth with the same proportion of the surface covered with water and ice and covered with land. If the globe's surface has a circumference of 308 centimeters, how much of the globe's surface area is covered with land to the nearest square centimeter? Okay, so once again, the emphasis should be on key ideas. So spherical globe, same proportion of the surface covered with water and ice and covered with the land. If the globe's surface has a circumference of 308, so I'm going to try and do my best to draw like a globe, if you guys can imagine that. Um, this is really, really bad, but if you can imagine that, um, as like a globe, now you've got the equator like this. Um, and how much of the globe's surface area is covered with land for the nearest square centimetre? So if I look here, I can see the Earth's surface is covered at 71% water and ice, and the rest, which is 29%. It's covered with land, okay, so that number is going to come in crucially. And it says how much of the globe's surface area, so you can see curved surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. And I asked myself, so all I need to do is do 4 pi r squared of the sphere times by 0 0.29 to figure it out. But of course we're missing a key component, which is the radius. How do we figure out the radius? Well, what have they given us? Its circumference is 308. And um, if it's, so it's basically saying that, remember, you can kind of take it to be a circle, uh, its surface. So if its circumference is 308, that's equal to pi times d, right? Circumference is pi times d. So 308 divided by 3.14 uh, is going to equal the diameter. And so divided by 3.14, so the diameter equals 98.08 dot, 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 dot. The radius is half of that, so you get 49.04 centimetres. Okay, 49.04. So how much of the globe's surface area is covered with land to the nearest square centimetre? Well, all you have to do is 4 pi r squared using this value and multiply that by 0 0.29 because, of course, we only care about the land, not the entirety of it. Okay, and if you do that, so if I do um, 4 pi times 49.04 squared, and remember you can use pi to be 3.14 here, or 22 over 7, doesn't really matter. And so that's another little tip I would say. So, you know, Sometimes I'll give you conversions for things like kilometers to meters, and it will be like super, super specific. It'll be like 1.609. I honestly don't think, really think it matters that much. You can probably still put in 1.6 and be fine, right? So you don't necessarily have to, you know, they're, they're never going to give you a false conversion. So if you know it, you know it. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so it's not like you have to, here, for example, it's not like you have to use 22 over 7. I think that I might, my answer might be slightly askew from the real answer. Um, but normally, like I said, the answer should be fair enough apart. Um, that you sh it, should, it should be fine if you use 3.14 as opposed to 22 over 7. So then times that by 0 0.29 and you get 8764 uh, centimetres squared. Okay, so that's the answer. So once again, it can seem tricky, but the point is that what all we're trying to do is really, really, really focus in on just the relevant questions. Okay, and I know that's easy for me to say, but you can see in practice, um, it definitely very, very much is possible. Okay, so on to the next question. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So according to the sample map, what is the distance on the ground in kilometers between Larkdown and High Elkham? Larkdown and High Elkham is going to be this here. And so you can see this is um, a bit of Pythagoras. So just 9.7 squared minus 6.5 squared square rooted. So 9.7 squared minus 6.5 squared square rooted gives us 7.2 centimeters. But of course, we need to work out the real distance and we need to know, first of all, uh, what scale that they're using, right? And so we figure, we kind of are familiar with this idea now because we did it in one of the earlier questions. So we try and look for the sample map scale. It says it's made by the cartographer, shown in the figure below. It's a local map of three towns with greater detail for recreation and everyday use. So local map, but greater detail for recreation and everyday use. And the scale is 1 to 24,000. So 7.2 centimeters goes to X. One is to 24,000. So if you guys haven't seen it, some of my um, ratios or proportions video, I talk about maps in there and I'd really advise you to check it out. So the point with maps is the scales they give you mean that, so here one to 24,000 means one centimeter on the map represents 24,000 centimeters in real life. So if we've got 7.2 centimeters here, its equivalent distance in real life is just gonna be 24,000 times 7.2, which is 1728. Sorry, 172,800 centimetres, um, which when you divide um, by 100, you'll get 1728 metres. And if you divide that by 1,000, you'll get 1 1.728 kilometres. 
Okay, and um, so according to this alpha map, what is the distance on the ground in kilometers between Larkdown and High Alcum? It's going to be 1.728 um, kilometers. And you can see, once again, it's not necessarily too difficult. And I think these map questions are actually quite nice. So I know the person that um, put this question set in said it was an abomination of a set, um, which I thought was quite funny. Um, but I, I understand why they can be difficult, of course, but I definitely think you guys have the skills and tool set, tools and skill set available um, to be able to really excel with these questions. Because like I said, there's only a finite amount of things that they really ask you about. Okay, so um, yeah, just something to bear in mind, basically. Okay, so last question as part of this set. So the distance between London and Singapore on a spherical globe made by the cartographer is 10.684 inches. To the nearest mile, what is the actual distance between London and Singapore on the Earth's surface? Assume the Earth is a sphere. So one of the things here um, that I think is important is, so obviously with all the questions before when I was using the scale, so uh, on 1 to 24,000 or 1 to whatever, I used centimetres because that's what we were given. But you can see that there's no units actually given. So the scale applies whatever unit you use. So one meter on the map would still represent 24,000 meters. One inch would represent 24,000 inches, so on and so on and so on. So the first thing is, of course, um, yeah, we've got to um, have a look at um, the info um, that they give us in terms of what, so it says this is a spherical globe, and you can see the scale here, one to 40 million. Okay, so one to 40 million, is going to be 10.6842x. So you can see here you times by 10.684. And obviously one thing, if you put, try to put this into your calculator, it won't give you necessarily um, a number. It will probably just come up with an error warning. So you just have to be a bit smart. And so instead of doing 40 million times 10.684, you can just do like 40 times 10.684 um, and then just add on the rest of the numbers yourself, which gives us 427... Um, Three six zero zero zero, I think so. Four two seven, three six zero zero zero. Okay, so yeah, that makes about sense as well because you're timesing it by about ten, so you're gonna get instead of being forty million, it's about four hundred million uh, inches. Okay, but of course it asks what is the distance between um, London and Singapore on the Earth's surface, and it says to the nearest mile. Okay, and we've got it in inches right now. So you can see inches to feet, feet to miles. So it's not going to be too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 12 to get it into feet. Divide this by 12 and you get 3561333.33. And then I'm going to divide by 5280 to get it into um, miles. And I get 6744.94 dot, 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 dot. So the answer is 6745 miles okay so once again it's not necessarily the most um difficult question although it might appear it from the onset but we're just doing the same thing each time identifying what the scale is multiplying by the appropriate scale factor and um, choosing the appropriate digits um, and then making sure that we're converting into the final appropriate unit okay so um yeah as you can see it's not necessarily um the most challenging i think of course i appreciate that there will be some people might have difficulties with it but like as i mentioned i do have a ratios and proportions video um where i did already um talk a little bit about maps um, in a little bit more detail so if you guys haven't seen that i would highly recommend you to go and check that out okay so i hope you guys found this video helpful um please do leave a like um make sure to share and subscribe and i know that we're coming to the end of the ucat season and so therefore please let me know what you'd like to see next as well um and um, i'll catch you guys in the next video thank you as always for all of your support